the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. I don't think there has ever been a video game system I have enjoyed so much that has been so hated by the general public. It was the Rodney Dangerfield of console gaming, and got no respect at all. Some of that is because so few people actually owned the thing while it was relevant. It started life as a $700 doorstop with just a single game, and even when it did get a price drop, it was still $500 freaking dollars. When it got going strong, the majority of the limelight got soaked up by the incoming Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Regardless, I really enjoyed my 3DO and supported it all the way up till its demise in early 1997. Over 200 games were released for it during its run, and despite popular opinion, many of them were actually quite excellent. It was also on the market for nearly two years before the Sony PlayStation showed up in North America, and the Saturn actually started getting regular game releases. In this episode, we will be taking a look at my personal top 10 games for the 3DO, what I enjoyed about them, and why they were so important to my gaming at the time. This was actually a lot harder than you'd think because the system actually had some solid titles. No honorable mentions here though because I have plenty to say about the 10 I have chosen. We start out our list with Samurai Showdown. This port was handled by Crystal Dynamics and was at the time as close as you could get to the arcade at home without actually owning a Neo Geo. I can't stress enough how incredible this was. Visually it looks so close to the original arcade, including impressive sprite size and all the main cast of characters. The CD audio was a winner too, and really added to the experience. So was it Neo Geo perfect? No it really wasn't. While it did retain the full screen scaling feature, it also had some pretty rough slowdown during gameplay. It wasn't enough to kill the fun factor for the Super Nintendo and Genesis heathens, but purists will definitely thumb their noses up at it. Even so, the animation was decent, and it played well enough to hold my attention for quite a while. Of course, nowadays, Showdown 1 is on every device known to man, but there was a time when a strong Neo Geo port was worth its weight in gold. Keep that in mind when you give it a go, and I'm sure you'll come away with a favorable opinion yourself. The 3DO was home to some weird ass games, and there was none stranger than Killing Time. This puzzle and story driven first person shooter has creepy monsters, ghosts, and even killer ducks. Something terrible happened in the mansion you're exploring, and you'll need to listen to the past occupants to piece together the entire story. While you do that, just about every damn thing you can think of attacks you, and you'll use shotguns, Molotov cocktails, and even a magical staff to put them down. The frame rate is a bit choppy, but the areas had a great variety that were often spooky and unsettling. The good news is, is that there was a PC version of it that has since been updated and put on Steam for just 10 bucks. So if you have any interest, that's where you want to snag it. It originally came out at a time when most first person shooters concentrated heavily on the shooting at the expense of story, but not so in this case. It has everything you need to keep you entertained. In 1991, we received a port of Namco's on-rails polygon space shooter, Starblade. This had been cutting-edge tech upon its original 1991 release, so no home console had any hope of doing it at the time. Fast forward a few years and the 3DO delivered an excellent version of it that I absolutely adored. The story here is simple. Some aliens have shown up to destroy the Earth with a giant Death Star-like device called Red Eye and you must use your specially designed fighter called Geosword to stop it. The gameplay follows a predetermined path while enemies attack you from every angle. If you're fast, you'll survive long enough to see the ending. 
The more you play, the more familiar you'll become with the attack patterns. I really dug this game's presentation back then. It was so cool to be launched into space and do battle while 3D ships flew all around you. The 3DO version actually looks better than the arcade thanks to a mix of pre-rendered background video that used textured mapping as opposed to flat shaded polygons of the original. It made for a great experience if you enjoy these types of games. Making a rapid descent. Making a great turn. Return Fire was a great 1995 overhead shooter that was similar to games like Desert Strike. In this one, you got to choose between four different war machines and then basically blow everything to hell. Your goal is to rout the enemy and take his flag. It starts out easy enough, but before long, you'll really need to take your time and strategize to get that victory. You can even play it in two-player mode and kill a friend. This was also one of the few console games at the time that had a legit expansion pack that added additional levels. If you enjoy slow, methodical destruction, this one is definitely for you. Its greatest asset is its replayability. You just never get tired of blowing things up. Sadly, the 3DO version of Doom is a choppy, unplayable mess of a game that really left a lot to be desired. But that certainly wasn't the case with its forebearer, the mighty Wolfenstein 3D. The color is spot on, the performance silky smooth, and those damn Nazis bleed like stuck pigs when executed. And speaking of Nazis, there's no censorship here that I can see. You get it all in its original glory. It even sounds fantastic. First-person shooters were up and coming on consoles at the time, and they usually came with a ton of compromises in just about every way. Not so here, dude. Wolf 3D was a beast that scratched that itch for something violent to let off some steam. What some saw as corrupting kids, I actually practice as a form of therapy to help me after a long night at work. I enjoyed this every bit as much as I had Doom. Its only real weakness is that it was a single-player only experience. When it came time for the 3DO to have a mascot of its own, it ended up being the Crystal Dynamics created Gex. I was excited for this one for a number of reasons. Unlike many of my fellow gamers, I actually loved the idea of 32-bit two-dimensional games. The prospect of more color, animation, and superior sound would take some of my favorite genres and make them even better, so I welcomed it with open arms. And for the most part, Gex was a wonderful realization of that. It also was a game loaded with personality and charm, something the 3DO desperately needed at the time. While it was never as exact as Mario, nor did it have Sonic's raw fun factor, Gex was still a decent game with a strong presentation. On the 3DO itself, nothing was even close to it within the genre, and its only real weakness is its odd save system and uneven difficulty. It came to the PlayStation, Saturn, and PC a while later, but it's always been associated with the 3DO first. Sun and green is good. I'll take this and this and this. I loved NFL football games and had always been a fan of Madden on the Sega Genesis. When it came to the 3DO in mid 1994, I was ready for my first taste of 32-bit sports action. It blew me the hell away too. Digitized players, realistic presentation, it took the games I have been playing for years and made them look ancient in comparison. The quality of the playbook and AI are just as strong as before, so you essentially had the perfect game of 1994 football. Well, at least close to it. While it did have an NFL license for the teams, it lacked one for the Players Association. 
Electronic Arts didn't even bother putting numbers on the players' uniforms. This put a blemish on an otherwise excellent game. Later, 32-bit efforts like Sony's Game Day would destroy it the following year, but for a time, I played the absolute hell out of it. I would have loved to have seen this get a follow-up to improve the few things it was missing, but it would be the only time Madden graced the platform. We wouldn't see another 32-bit entry into the series until Madden 97 for the PlayStation and Saturn two years later. With arcade racing games becoming the tip of the spear for 3D polygon technology, home games in the genre slipped into relative obscurity. That was until the summer of 1994 and the texture-mapped powerhouse Need for Speed found its way to the 3DO interactive multiplayer. There had been nothing like this on a home console before. Seemingly out of the blue, the 3DO proved itself as a real contender in the newfangled market of high-end polygon games. Man, was it gorgeous, too. You have to realize that this was damn near a year before the Saturn showed up in North America, and the closest thing we had seen to it were a few pathetic attempts at polygon racing games on the Atari Jaguar. It didn't hide behind unrealistic control, either. It actually attempted to be a serious racing game with realistic control and physics. It had a great list of cars, too, an exotic mix of high-end sports cars most of us couldn't afford to even sit in. It brought home features most racing games didn't typically have, like replays and multiple camera views. It also used the power of the CD-ROM to bring us video showcases that really sold the beauty of the vehicles. It definitely was made for aficionados by aficionados. Later versions changed the gameplay a bit to be more forgiving and added a bunch more content, but it was on the 3DO first and was easily one of the platform's better games. When Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo showed up in the arcades in early 1994, I had no idea I'd have a 3DO version of it a mere nine months later. And man, what a version it was. While Street Fighter 2 was no stranger to home systems at that point, they were always heavily cut back in sound, visuals, and animation. In fact, despite the ravings of crazed platform evangelists, side by side, they weren't even close. Getting the 3DO version at the time was a revelation, a moment of clarity that made you realize you had been living like a peasant for years with countless compromises. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the 3DO was drop dead gorgeous, with large detailed sprites, impressive color, and great animation. It was so far above the other home console ports at the time it was night and day. It even had a remixed soundtrack that had some of the best music the series ever produced. With a bit of time and experience under your belt, it became apparent that this wasn't arcade perfect, but at the time, I simply didn't care. Few things were back then, and what really mattered was that in 1994, Street Fighter simply didn't get any better than this outside of spending thousands of dollars for a Shark X68000. I still play it from time to time and have incredibly fond memories of it. The base 3DO pad only has three main action buttons on its face, so if you want to play it seriously, you'll need an aftermarket controller to do it. The Capcom Soldier Pad is quite good, if a bit expensive. When it comes to the turning point in 3DO ownership where things went from a mild curiosity to a serious gaming machine, it was in July of 1994 when Road Rash was released. The platform had been out for less than a year when this popped up, and everything changed in an instant. Forgotten were the mediocre puzzle and full motion video games before it. You legit had a contender for Game of the Year here, and it was only available for the 3DO. What had already been an excellent series on the Sega Genesis 
was brought new life by its 32-bit presentation. Wow, what an upgrade it was, too. Gone were the forward-scrolling 2D landscapes from before, now replaced by textured polygons for a much more realistic look. The biker and pedestrian sprites were also redone as digitized images, allowing them to fit into the new engine a lot better. Surrounding the gameplay is one of the best presentations of the series. You get full motion video showing you win or lose, as well as a licensed soundtrack with bands like Soundgarden and Monster Magnet. Add in some surreal art for the menus, and you had a heck of a unique game start to finish. Gameplay wasn't much different from the Genesis titles, which was a good thing to me. Basically, you just tried to finish in first place while beating down a few people in the process. It's good clean fun. The Saturn and PlayStation versions had better performance, but none of them sounded as good as the 3DO original, not to mention they arrived two years after the fact. Road Rash 32-bit is easily the best game on the platform, and to me, it's in the discussion for the best game that entire generation. So there you have it, my top 10 for the often forgotten 3DO system. There was a period of time in gaming where this thing really provided a great time. For nearly two years you couldn't play many of its games on any other platform, an often ignored point that the haters simply don't talk about. The biggest problem the 3DO faced was its enormous asking price, which simply put it out of reach of the average gamer. Had I not been 18 years old and working a full-time job, I never would have owned it myself. The good news is, is that nearly every game here eventually came to other platforms, so you have options if you are interested. Many of them perform better too. But the 3DO is a lesson on the importance of timing when it comes to your own personal experience with gaming. Those of you that played these games much later probably don't share the same level of passion about them as I do. The difference between playing Road Rash in 1994 versus 1996 is huge and separated by countless other games that may affect your opinion. You can apply this to damn near everything in gaming really. The when, the how, and the where of when you play the games really does matter. For the 3DO, that time period between 1993 and 1995 was everything for me personally. It was before the Saturn and PlayStation really got started and provided me with games that had no real equal on anything else. For most people, the price of entry was just too steep and the Genesis and Super Nintendo had more than enough to keep them happy. I was willing to take the 3DO journey, however, and it remains a system I am quite fond of today. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.